Good evening and welcome to The Core, coming to you live from Channel's television studios in Abuja, Nigeria. My name is Gadria Ahmed. The free flow of ideas and the capacity to shine a powerful light of accountability on government and business are the foundations of sustainable socio-economic development that underpins the critical role that the media plays in the development of any society. So today, we beam our searchlight inward and focus on the Nigerian media. How are we faring in carrying out our constitutionally mandated roles? What are the challenges that the industry faces? Is the Nigerian media today capable of serving the best interests of Nigeria and Nigerians? Or do things need to change? These are many more questions on today's edition of The Core. But first, a brief report. The Nigerian media is often referred to as the fourth estate of the realm because of the crucial role it plays in a democratic political system. According to Section 22 of the 1999 Constitution, the press is a vital organic element of society and must be free at all times to uphold the core objectives of the country's supreme law. The Constitution intends for the press to be a watchdog to check the excesses of government and ensure that government delivers on its promises to the people. <laughs> The origins of the media predate Nigerian nationalism. As such, the press was an efficient tool for nationalists to question the oppressive practices of colonialism and struggle for independence from British rule in Nigeria. Politically conscious publications like Lagos Times, Lagos Echo, and Lagos Weekly Record followed. Their main trust was to agitate against colonialism and British rule. Fast forward to the breakdown of democracy and the age of military rule in the mid-1960s, the media took an activist stand. It was vibrant and purposeful in criticizing military dictatorship. The media was, however, subject to brutal military decrees intended to guard the press. General Muhammad Buhari, in 1984, enacted the infamous Decrees 2 and 4 making it possible to imprison without trial any journalist who published information that threatened national security or simply made fun of a government official. If you remember, quite a lot of journalists uh, lost their life. Many were interrogated, I mean, were detained. Uh, many lost their job. Uh, you could readily recall Bagada Kalto and, and people who paid the supreme price. But for some Nigerians, the media of today appears to have lost its way and no longer has the bite it once had. This is even as some people emphasize the need for proper regulation. How you put in standards, these are not perfectly sure what your standards are. How you bring in discipline, these two are not sure how your disciplinary procedure, a firm one, that will make society also to say that these people that are our watchdog also has a way of enforcing discipline among its own members. NUJ is more of a welfare organization, not a professional organization. That's from my own point of view. Because if it is a professional organization, we are going to adhere strictly to if you don't possess social qualification, you will not be allowed, allowed to practice journalism. Even if you possess, you must go for maybe entry exam or what have you. All these things are not there. Journalism, since time immemorial, it has been all common affairs. And even up to now, it has not changed. However, some journalists blame the challenging working environment and condition of service. The conditions are lower. You have uh, instances where journalists are old, months on end. Then journalists are very, very low paid. And then, for instance, in this country, the definition of freelance journalism here is basically different from what it is known to be in different parts of the world. 
Recently, the media has also had to deal with the emergence of the internet and online social media platforms that have not only added a new dimension to the evolution of the media as we know it, but also a revolutionary transformation of society. Despite all the criticism and challenges facing the media, it remains clear that the place of the press in any society is a crucial one that must be guaranteed and protected. After all, the media is crucial to the practice and survival of any democracy. To discuss the media in Nigeria, I'm very pleased to have a panel in the studio here with me. On my right, I'm joined by the coordinator of the Africa Center for Media and Information Literacy, Mr. Chido Onuma. Thank you, sir, for coming. Thank you for having me. Next to him is the Director General, Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, Dr. Mansour Liman. Sir, thank, thank you, you for joining me. Thank you. To my immediate left is Senator Bala Ibn Allah, a distinguished member of Nigeria Senate. Um, he tried and failed to get a social media bill passed a few months ago. Thank you, sir, for joining us. Thank you. Yes. And last but certainly not the least, I'm joined by Aisha Osori, civil rights activist, author, and a columnist in a lot of um, Nigerian newspapers. Ma'am, thank you so much for coming to the program. I also have a very distinguished panel in the studio, and I hope that they will be very active contributors uh, to this conversation. To kick us off, I'd like to start by asking Senator Naala to give us his assessment of the Nigerian media. Well, it's very difficult to assess the Nigerian media without giving the time frame for assessment. Uh, those of us who have been privileged to live on this uh, art for about 50 years have had the privilege of watching some very, very vibrant and focused uh, journalists in the past, uh, be it NTA that was the first, maybe the national television that uh, we, we were watching, and then the offshoot of the new ones that came around, uh, the, the AIT and rest. Now, there has been a significant change uh, in the cautious way with which the public is fed with certain information. Uh, in the past, maybe for professionalism, we, we, we never had the problem of the media uh, maybe crossing the line uh, by feeding the public what they know is not the true situation of uh, uh, issues. Now, somewhere along the line, when the military decided in its wisdom, in wisdom or lack of it to remain in governance, and the public started to, uh, uh, to be tired of them, then we saw the journalists in their attempt to push the military out of power, resorting to some unprofessional conduct. Of all we have just had, okay. uh, that culminated in the enactment of Decree 4 by the then uh, Buhari administration in 1980. So, so historically it's been a mixed bag, yeah. but in your view, what is the situation today? Well, the situation today is that the print and electronic media have done very, very well in, the, in their handling of the affairs of the country. We, might, we had some one or two cases where they have crossed the line quite okay, but on the average we can conveniently say that the media has played a very, very significant role and they are doing very well. 